All right, first question I'm going to ask you, ask you is, do you, is Rachel Parsons in Ohio? <laughs> I've, I've never had the pleasure of meeting the lady. I've only, <laughs> I've only seen her on your show. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we can eliminate Ohio anyway. So listen, tell me about Zach Fisher, that uh, young man who unfortunately was, uh, you know, I think sent home. Right. Uh, uh, he sounds like an outstanding young man from the reports that I've read. He won a national trap shooting championship, and being very proud of that, he, he went to Illinois from California to do it. And uh, being very proud of that, he had a shirt from the event. As, as you know, a lot of these events pass out commemorative T-shirts and things like that. And he wore it to school, and it had the name of the facility on it. And it also had a little slogan that uh, I thought was kind of cute. It said, I love the smell of gunpowder in the morning, which, of course, is a parody on the famous line that uh, uh, was uttered in the movie Apocalypse Now. And a teacher took offense to this and told him it was inappropriate. And uh, the school administration backed him up, and they sent him home and, and made him take the shirt off. And this is just another illustration in a long line of examples that I could go back and cite, either having written about these before or read about them before, of zero tolerance policies gone absolutely nutty and haywire. And I don't know, did you have a chance to uh, to show the clip that you and I had discussed? Yeah, yeah, you know, David, we're going to show that right now. I just wanted you to kind of walk us into it, and we're going to cut to the clip, and then we'll come back. Good. All right, let's show the clip. Local 12 year old is so good at his sport, he recently traveled all the way to Illinois for a national competition. But now his family is confused on why school officials consider a t shirt from the event inappropriate attire. It's like somebody wearing basketball or baseball. He's got the awards. This one I was the one I got when I won the state championship. The sport in which Zachary Fisher excels trap shooting. It's a nice gun, it doesn't have much recoil after I shoot. A shirt from Nationals, the 12-year-old wore with pride until a teacher told him it's not appropriate at school. The decision backed up by the principal. Up here in the corner, it has the a gun. This is not really a true gun. This is a silhouette of a gun. This is a drawing. But is it all about the image? It says, I love the smell of gunpowder in the morning. The phrase, strikingly similar to a famous line from the movie Apocalypse Now. I love the smell of night pump in the morning. Zachary's father and coach confused over what exactly school officials find offensive. I did not hear what the policy was. Nobody would take the time to tell me what it was. The principal chose to leave school without returning our phone call. But the parents we talked to agreed that this was not a shirt that should be worn on campus. And I don't think it's appropriate. Well, I think it sends the wrong message. No one at the school said anything when the seventh grader wore other shirts for the sport, including this one, with a much more defined image of a shotgun, leaving the 12-year-old wondering if he can wear other shirts showing guns, why can't he wear one that shows his accomplishments? It's to go out, have fun, and shoot clay targets. It's not shooting real people. Zachary was not threatened with a suspension, and he says he doesn't know if he's going to try to wear the shirt again. He says he's just very disappointed that he's been told that he can't. Yeah, you know, David, before we start on this, uh, I, I, I just have to say that this is obviously generated, I'll bet it's not generated from the principal. I will bet you, and we don't know, we're going to look into it, perhaps you have the answer, uh, but I bet this is generated from a teacher in the hallway somewhere, or perhaps in one of his classes, who is very left, very anti-gun, and... She has brought this to the attention of the principal, and the principal, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, the guy wasn't going to dismiss the child for it, uh, just sent him home to change the shirt. Now, I'm not giving him an excuse, okay? I'm not trying to cover up for the guy. I think what he did was probably wrong, but he probably caught right in the middle someplace between some radical left-wing teacher and, and having to make a decision. Is it right? No, it is not right. Take it from there. Well, you know, if a teacher would have come to me, I would have asked them, what's the problem? Because if you take a look at what the uh, two mothers who were in their car said, one goes, 
well, I don't think it's appropriate. And the other says, well, I think it sends the wrong message. And, and the question I would have is why? Why is it inappropriate? And why does it send the wrong message? Why the conflation with those of us who are uh, gun rights and gun aficionados and sportsmen and hunters and shooters and rights activists with the worst aspect, the violent. You know, we're the people who control ourselves and we're being conflated with the people who are unable to exercise rights responsibly. And when you take a look at that attitude, this, this ostrich, bury your head in the sand. I've seen kids sent home for little toy guns or little G.I. Joe figures or, or, you know, little things of that nature. Uh, a teacher got suspended because she was on Facebook uh, posing with a gun and somebody figured that was inappropriate. And there is just an entire uh, way of thinking that is so different from what made America great. And, and by that I mean the pioneer spirit and the freedom fighter spirit and what was supposed to be the national character instead of hiding from guns and thinking that the safest thing for children is not to talk about it and ignore it and hope it goes away. Whereas you and I both know that education and training and involvement are, you know, the true keys to safety. So, you know, that that's pretty yeah, much where uh, I'm yeah, coming from. Yeah, yeah, I actually agree with you. My problem with this is that I'm not sure that we have defined what inappropriate is. Does that mean that if that very same young boy, Zachary, uh, looks like a really nice kid too, I'm sorry we couldn't get him on the show, uh, but he does have to go to school. <laughs> but if he had wore a shirt that had a U.S. serviceman in uniform, perhaps a, a, a photograph of a Humvee and a, and, a, and a couple of guys hanging out of it, would that have been inappropriate? Well, inappropriate, you know, is one of those things where, what does that mean exactly? And I, I don't know who to point the finger at here, except that I think you're probably right. Uh, had the principal had any, uh, let's see if a, I'll think of a word here, uh, <laughs> had any, uh, maybe he should have just turned to the, to the teacher, you're right, and said, so what's the problem? It, 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 it is an eye of the beholder type thing, and unfortunately, when you have that as your, as your benchmark, no one knows what rule to conform to. It, it appears to be the whim of the day. But I would challenge your viewers, and particularly those of you who have children in the public schools or grandchildren in the public schools, to look at the relevant textbooks and see what those textbooks say about the Second Amendment, because I've seen textbooks that define the Second Amendment in passing and they just want to gloss over it and they, they say well it, it involves the right of states to form militias and so see if that textbook is still being used where your child or grandchild goes to school and also if not if they have corrected it see if there's been any attempt whatsoever to educate the children in terms of the Heller decision and the McDonald decision and the fact that it, it is now recognized by the highest court of what we all knew it was as an individual right to keep and bear arms. So this is very critical to uh, just not only our education, but our ability to grow up and not be inmates of an institution, but to be free citizens of a republic, which is supposed to be part and parcel of what education is all about. It is to allow us to grow and to take our place in society as responsible members and being responsible you have freedoms and you have civic obligations and are we in fact raising people to be nanny state beneficiaries to where we avoid the horrible scary subject of guns and and james my point in writing this was not so much to point the finger at the principal, although I did, I think, uh, uh, cite the fact that I found it ironic that his last name is Gunn, <laughs> okay? But it's just to create this general awareness and, and to reaffirm that these things are going on in our schools, and it's incumbent on us to keep an eye out for that and to intervene when and where we can to make sure that the children are not being uh, manipulated, if you will, with an agenda, and they're not being told that something that you and I know is very good 
is bad and wrong and something to be ashamed of. Yeah, yeah, you know, David, let me, let me ask you this. Now, I know that you have, uh, how many kids do you have? I have two sons. You have two sons, and both of them are in what grade? Uh, my uh, youngest son is a uh, junior in high school, and my oldest son is a sophomore in college. Okay, well then you would know the answer to the question I'm about to ask you. Is there a dress code? Uh, when when I was sending the boys in California, I was sending the boys to a Christian school, and there was in fact a dress code with a uniform shirt and things of that nature. Uh, at the high school where my son is going to now, there is no dress code, uh, okay. and and pretty much uh, I've I've always been the type with my boys as long as they're good boys and they're doing what's right and and they're 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 great kids. Uh, I haven't been really down on them in terms of how they dress, uh, you know, how they wear their hair. I, I draw the line at uh, at cats and, and piercings. That that I figure is an adult decision, <laughs> and you don't make that until you're an adult living on your own. But uh, aside from any other thing, they're they're pretty good kids, and they've used pretty good judgment. You know, so I, so I guess I would have to ask this question. You know the picture that I'm referring to when I say the pistol that's tied in a knot in front of the UN? Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm going to send one of those to Zachary. If he can wear that to school, is that okay? I doubt that they would allow him to do it. We're, ta we're talking, uh, what, it's, it's right near Sacramento, California, uh, Rosedale School District. Uh, you, you, you might want to try. I, I'd uh, try to get his, his father on the phone and talk to him. I, I think if, if you could wrangle it, those people would be excellent guests to have on your program. Yeah, and, and we are gonna, we're going to try to do that, David. We actually are. And, and uh, uh, Zachary, if you happen to be watching the show or your dad's watching the show, which I hope you are, get a hold of us. We'd love to have you come on here, your side of the story. And I am going to send you that UN shirt just to see whether or not what the school does. Well, I'll send it to your father. I'll let him make the decision. <laughs> and what, what I wonder, James, is, you know, would, would at a school uh, that's sufficiently hoplophobic, would you be able to wear an American Trigger Sports Network shirt? Hey, that's camp? a better... <laughs> uh, okay. Or, like or, or, would, or would that give them the heebie-jeebies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hey, I like that idea better. Maybe I'll send him that one instead. Anyway, yeah. if we can get a hold of him, I, I will definitely have him on, and we'll carry this on a little further. Terrific. All right. Thank you, David. We'll see you again next week. James, see you. Thank you. Okay.